Hey resellers, thanks so much for tuning in to today's video. Today I'm going to take you on a little trip through the month of June 2021 and show you some of my most favorite sales, some highlights, some things that are interesting or noteworthy or any of the sales that I really feel like you should know about. All right, guys, the first sale that I'm going to tell you about was actually a pair of trail shoes that I purchased at a local yard sale. I bought these shoes for me to wear, even though they were a half size uh, too small or I, more like a full size too small because these were a women's nine. I'm more of a women's 10, um, but these shoes were such a good deal. I think I paid three or four dollars for them and they were these Adidas trail shoes. And um, historically, I haven't sold a ton of um, running shoes or trail shoes, but I picked these up again for me and sold them. Um, I didn't even do anything to clean these up. They weren't in that great a condition and I sold them for $25 with free shipping. So awesome sale there. Wanted to tell you guys about it because after I bought them and thought, you know, if nothing else, they would be great as a backup pair of shoes on a really rainy trail run. I uh, actually walked into my thrift store and found the exact trail shoes that I already run in for four or $5. So I bought those and replaced them, um, replaced these. So that was a really good sale. Um, a quick little bread and butter item here. Here. I feel like a lot of resellers walk right by belts, especially if they're not branded. This belt was not branded in any type of way. I think it said Argentina leather on it, but it sold for $10 plus $5.50 shipping. Just a simple little, um, leather belt with brass buckle there and so I just thought I would mention that to you because you may be walking right past the belts and uh there's money to be made there especially in most thrift stores you can pick up a belt for maybe a dollar two dollars sometimes even less than that if you can flip every one of those dollars into ten dollars belts don't take up a whole lot of space lay them flat or coil them up and lay them in a drawer that way um when you ship them be sure that you protect the belt buckle but they're easy to ship as well so consider belts if you haven't they don't have to be branded to sell for, you know, $10, $15. Another item that I sold in the month of June was this Harley Davidson shirt that I was so excited about. I think I paid like six or eight dollars for this shirt. I was absolutely confident that it would sell for like $50 or more. Let's see if that's going to allow you to really see. Okay, can you see the detail there where it says Harley Davidson on the back of the shirt? Shirt looks like fire, right? No, it was not. I finally accepted. Actually, one of these has the price tag on it. $8 I paid for that shirt. It only sold for $20 plus $4.80 shipping. So I know Harley Davidson is really cool right now. I know that we all want to jump in on that fad, but they're not all huge money makers. Even something that has that cool of a logo on it only sold for $20 plus barely shipping. I did sell a Walkman though, and uh, you guys know I always tell you about um, taking a picture of the battery compartment on Walkmans. This Walkman sold for $24.99 and it actually isn't a Walkman. It's not Sony brand. So unless the cassette player is Sony brand, do not put Walkman in the title. This is just a generic, well, it's not generic, a GE cassette player. Let me turn up the brightness here on my phone so you guys can hopefully see this stuff a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is just a cassette player here sold for again $24.99 plus $7.50 shipping. So if you can pick those up for two, four dollars, um, wherever you're at, they're absolutely worth the pickup. I sold a Victoria's Secret bombshell push-up bikini top. This was given to me by a co-worker. She gave me a whole lot of Victoria's Secret swimwear that she and her daughters were not using anymore. And this thing sold for, get a load of this, $40 plus $8 shipping. The buyer was all in at almost $50 for a used bikini top. So Victoria's Secret bombshell push-up, remember that. I started selling vintage photographs recently at uh, the 100 mile yard sale that I went to. I bought a little Ziploc bag that had two smaller Ziploc bags inside of it. And those were full of black and white photos. The seller um, sold them to me for $2 for the entire bag. And I thought, man, it's worth eight quarters just to look through these pictures. So I picked them up and let me tell you that keywords are key in trying to sell these because there's no brand. There's no way you have to describe it in 80 characters or less and get a buyer's eyes on your item. This first one sold for eight $18 plus $5 shipping and it is a picture of a railroad conductor. Isn't that so cool? This one photo sold for $18 plus $5 shipping and my title was Handsome Young Uniformed Conductor RPPC Pullman Hat in Studio 
postcards. So research those uh, words for sure. Let me see what else is really of notice that I want to show you guys about. Oh, I sold another pair of teaks for $110. $110 for these navy blue teaks I paid $3 for absolutely all day long. I will pick up teaks anytime. Fun fact, a friend of mine recently texted me and she said, oh my gosh, Rachel, I'm at work and a girl just brought into the break room like four or five pairs, six pairs, something of teaks she wants. I think she wanted like $5 a pair or something for them. They were in almost brand new condition. I said, why is she selling them? She says that they hurt her feet and I know that they resell for you really well because this friend of mine is not a reseller. She said, should I get them? I said, absolutely. But can you ask her, are they genuine? Because something didn't look right about the back part right here to me it didn't look right and then I didn't see a number I didn't see a size number on the sole um, because if you zoom in here you can see there's an eight there I didn't see that in the picture. I was like, can you just ask her if they're genuine? And the coworker was straight up and said, no, those are fake. So that was a no. But if you can find teaks for um, a decent price, $110, guys. I would say pay upwards of $20 personally for a pair of teaks. I might pay more than that if they were in very, very good condition because they sell quickly. I've recently sourced five or six pairs and the only ones I have left is I picked up a pair and got home and realized that they were both right feet. So that's that's no good. Um, but teaks are a really good seller. The next item is another photograph. And you guys, this one picture out of that bag, that $2 Ziploc bag of photos, this one picture sold for $39 plus shipping plus $4 shipping. It is a really cool photo, black and white again of, well, they're all black and white, of this musician, this drummer. And when I saw this, I thought, how in the world am I going to um, get buyers to understand how cool this photo is and draw their attention to it? So I described it as rare RPPC drummer Lyle Reed, because that was written on the back, Lyle Reed, band real photo drum musician. So I just put every word in there that I could in 80 characters and sold that guys $39 for one photo that's incredible to me um oh this was kind of a cool sale because recently my husband and I um we needed to buy a new kitchen faucet and the faucet that I wanted we just have kind of expensive taste and by we I probably mean me he just goes along with the things that I pick out and and gets what it is that is in the vision here okay so we knew what I wanted we both agreed that this faucet looked awesome but it was like $300 so being the reseller I am I went to eBay to see well could we find it cheaper and sure enough I want to say we ended up paying around $100 for this $300 faucet it comes in it's Kohler brand it's great we were looking for a faucet that is made in America the thing is so much better than the piece of junk that we had um, ordered previously off of like some cheap website well, this faucet came with a couple pieces that we didn't use. One of which was that soap dispenser, like that auxiliary soap dispenser that if you have the hole in the sink there, you can, um, you can mount the soap from underneath and the pump is on top. We weren't going to use that. So I put it up on eBay and sold it for $22 with free shipping. And I sold the plate that covers up the, like if you have three holes, this faucet only needed one. We only have one hole in our sink, so we didn't need that plate. I sold that plate for $10 plus shipping. So I've gotten back close to $30 from the hundred. So we're more of around $70 into a $300 faucet at this point. So if you buy things brand new and you have parts that you don't need for one reason or another, definitely look those up. It was not hard to find comps on this and it sold within days. $22 you guys um, here's another item that was really cool unbranded I'm just really enjoying lately the challenge of selling something that is unbranded to a worldwide audience because you have to be able to drive traffic to your item people have to be able to see it and this was this sold in Gainesboro Tennessee to I hope I hope a square dancer um this beautiful square dance dress this was part of the haul from the private estate i was able to go in and pick there's a couple videos back i will link that below in the description where i was able to go in and actually find all of these items this woman had handmade or had this made for her this square dance dress with bloomers and again there's no brand there's not even a size and i sold this for $24.97 plus eight dollars shipping here is my title beautiful yellow gingham handmade swing rockabilly square dance dress bloomers so anything gingham anything um, that is like a, 
uh, that silhouette of a dress. Definitely rockabilly. I feel like anything square dancing is kind of rockabilly. And that is a really good keyword because if you like that style, if that's the style of clothing you're looking for, that is a word you're going to type in. So you might not think about it as a seller, but if your item fits the rockabilly keyword term, definitely give that, uh, give that a consideration as a keyword. Um, another item that I picked up uh, is a Victoria's Secret swimsuit. I picked up for a couple dollars at my local thrift store. Sold for $27.99 plus $5 shipping. I threw that one on the mannequin to showcase it. I bought this swimsuit in hopes it may fit me, but it was tiny. There were still tags on the bottom, but the top was definitely in used condition. Um, so yeah, again, over $30 the buyer was all in for a used swimsuit. Um, definitely having a good time showing you guys these solds throughout the month of June. If you are having a good time watching, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you over here. Definitely going to be giving, a, uh, giving something away, hosting a giveaway whenever I get to 3,000 subscribers, which is coming up very, very soon. Um, so if you want to be part of that giveaway, definitely subscribe, turn on bell notifications, and I'll announce that giveaway video that is coming up. But until then, let's get on with the rest of the video. Um, I sell bandanas. Recently, I have just really gotten into selling Made in America bandanas. This one I threw up at auction because it was one that I hadn't seen quite like this before. Recently, I showcased a bandana that was not my own sale um, over on my Instagram that sold for almost $300. So I didn't want this to be one of those and priced it at like 70 bucks. So I put it up at $9.99 auction and that's all it sold for with $5 shipping. But look how pretty, how cool is this bandana? So um, I auctioned it off because I felt like there was uh, a wealth of, there's a wealth of collectors out there that are probably always scouring the eBay market for bandanas. So I thought that would probably get in, in front of one of them. Um, here's another sale that I want to tell you guys about because I went to a yard sale recently and I saw this little Star Wars mask that was like beaten up and falling apart, but it was vintage and it, I think it even has a tag on it that says Made in America. I said, how much for this mask? And when I say beaten up, I'm gonna show you the pictures and she looked at it and said, just take it. I'm not gonna charge you for that, that's free. I sold this mask for $15 plus $5.50 shipping. So. My son was able to tell me um, that this is actually a palace guard. If this is going to focus here, then you'll be able to see. This is a palace guard and look how crumpled up this thing is. Do you see how broken and busted this is? I went ahead and shipped it as though it were not so beat up and I um, bubble wrapped it. I took a lot of care wrapping this basically so it wouldn't fall apart because it is so beat up. Look, there's like a hole in the nose there. So the fact that this thing sold for over $20 because it's $15 plus $5 and 50 uh, cents shipping free at a yard sale. That's pretty good. Recently I sold some silver plated spoons and I want to show you guys the shape of these spoons in case you ever see them. You'll know exactly what they are. Um, let me see if I have a picture. Okay. This picture here, you can see the one on this side. You see how it has a serrated edge? That's called a grapefruit spoon. So it is able to uh, cut through the skin of the grapefruit, but then also scoop it out because it's a spoon. So this particular lot of spoons came in a box. They were all silver plated and beautiful. I bought them originally thinking I may want them, but I have grapefruit spoons and I probably didn't need silver ones. So I sold them for $32 plus free shipping. Those probably sold faster than any of the silver plate items that I have and uh, for more money. So if you're gonna pick up silver plate, maybe stick with silverware. As far as like the large platters and tea kettles and coffee crafts, I don't really do so well on those as I do very easy to store silverware. So to each their own, let me know in the comments if you sell silverware, um, a silver, silver plated, um, I don't know, platters and bowls and like I say, carafes and pitchers because I just, I feel like I can't give those away. Um, cream and sugar sets and stuff like that. But actual flatware, silverware, I can, I can sell that really, really well. I found some Le Creuset 
Le Creuset? Maybe you don't pronounce the T because that's French. I don't know. But this piece um, is a small, this was like six and three quarter inch skillet. This fit into a pretty small box. I sold this for $49.99 plus $12 shipping and it did not take all $12, I don't think, to ship this. Um, maybe with my packing materials, something close. But uh, this was very heavy and I actually want to say that this fit into either a regional A or a regional B box. I don't think it even took a regional B box. It was that small. So Le Creuset definitely is a brand that you need to be looking for. $50 you guys plus shipping. That's awesome. Um, another item Okay, if I'm going to tell you about all the good, I need to tell you about this one bad thing that happened. I actually had a return and I refunded the buyer. And you guys, if you followed me for any amount of time, know I don't accept returns. But this globe sold, this beautiful, beautiful globe here, sold for $26.75 plus $12 shipping, which is not enough, first of all, to ship a globe. And I thought that I had changed the shipping on all of my globes when I sold the first one and realized that it's more like $20 to ship a globe, but I didn't. So I sent this via FedEx and I took a best offer on it. She told me that it was a gift for her daughter who is a school teacher or the school principal. So um, I took a best offer. I ate a little bit on shipping on this because it ended up being about $14 to ship from Missouri to Texas. And when I packaged it, it was when my dad was still in town and um, I was just rushing to hurry up and get through everything and I knew when I closed the box there was a little bit of a bulge and I was like I don't know if that's a good idea maybe I should find a bigger box it was the biggest box I had and the lady was already asking when is it going to be shipped out and I said just let me get a bigger box I shipped it on day two and she acted like she was already a little bit out of shape about that well sure enough that little bit of bulge FedEx must have laid something heavy on top of it I feel like it was mainly my fault though so I didn't even turn in an insurance claim but the pressure on that globe split it in half you guys I had to refund the buyer I absolutely did because I just knew when she said it arrived damage I knew oh my gosh here I was telling myself I probably hadn't packaged that well enough so if you're packaging something up and you think twice and you're like Maybe I haven't packaged that well enough. Go back, do it right. Don't eat $30, $40 worth of profit. Cause I mean, $26.75 plus $12. Um, and to be, to be honest with you, I would rather have just had that globe as decor in my home than refunding someone and they get to keep the item. Cause what would be the point in having her send that back to me and another $14 in shipping for a broken, busted globe? Uh, learn from my mistakes on there. Um, I think I showed you guys recently, I'm pretty sure in my 100 mile yard sale um, haul, this plate that I bought that I said I was just gonna hang it up until it sold. Um, it has Neil Armstrong and the Moon Lady. I know I showed you guys this actually in a, in a prior haul video. This already sold, it didn't even last a week. It sold for $14.99 with free shipping. Oh, here's a good one that you have to know about. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I try to update when um, kind of like bolo items like this um, sell so that you know to be looking for them. So definitely look for my Instagram in the description below and go follow me over there and we can be co-workers. Um, but this is a vintage... 90 basically and a little short robe so i really enjoy selling uh, vintage lingerie pieces there are it's just huge amounts of people that are looking for these this set sold for 50 dollars plus eight dollars shipping um definitely vintage lingerie shows best on a mannequin if you could get it on a mannequin i would 100 percent not recommend modeling it um it's just a bad idea but 50 dollars plus eight dollars shipping that was nylon look for nylon items in vintage lingerie. I sold a piece of Johnny Was, the second piece I've ever sold. This was um, way prettier than the first piece I sold, but I originally priced this over $100. I came down into the 90s on it. Nobody was making a move on this, and I finally got an offer, and it must have been on a day that I really wanted to sell because I accepted a $55 offer on this beautiful Johnny Was shirt, plus I think $5.50 shipping. Um, I paid $2. I paid two dollars for this top so I'm um, definitely well into the profit there but just in case you're unfamiliar a lot of you guys I know if you just do hard goods or shoes or something like that Johnny Was may not be a brand that you are aware of if you see Johnny Was definitely pick it up that's a Bolo brand here's another photo 
Oh my gosh, how many photos are we gonna have in this video? Um, let me see, this one says, okay, this photo is pretty interesting. So when you are outsourcing, if you're wanting to find photos that would sell well, the um, subject needs to be really interesting. Something needs to be interesting about the photo. And look at this one. This guy over here is just playing banjo. And this guy looks like he's either bored or he's captivated or he's like, you interrupted my book. I don't really know what's going on here. But this photo, and we're talking about just little like five by six, uh, it's blurry until it recognizes my face. Little like five by six photos. Um, this sold for $25 plus $4 shipping, you guys. There's another women's clothing brand that I sold recently for over $50. Definitely always want you guys to know about those uh, over $50 sales. This is Jill, Jill Stewart. This is a formal dress that sold for $59 plus $10 shipping. Beautiful, beautiful dress. And if this took much longer to sell, I think I was going to try it on and just own it and go have photos made in it or something. The first two pictures I used as stock photos, I kept on the Nordstrom rack clearance tags, which is not even where I got it because that was still much more than what I paid for it. The dress retails, I think at $198, no, $398 retail. So it sold for $59 plus $10 shipping. Jill, Jill Stewart is the brand on that. Sold a Spice Girl tape, but not for very much. <laughs> Sold some vintage Levi's. And vintage Levi's, guys, don't, don't kill yourself looking for those because honestly, I feel like unless there's something very, very special about them, they're about a $25 to $35 sale for me most of the time. Um... I sold another pair of teaks. I actually sold two more pair of teaks. The both of them were silver. So I come in with four silver teaks and trying to match up which one goes with which to make two pair. Match those up and they really weren't in phenomenal condition. One pair sold for $65 plus $9 shipping and the other sold for $61 plus $9 shipping. They're almost identical. Here's the first pair I'll show you, but again, these uh, were a $3 pickup. So if you don't know Teaks, get to know Teaks. It's a brand that you absolutely want to know about. Um, I've sold a couple comic books in the month of June. There was one set uh, of two that were similar that I lotted up together that sold for like $14 um, some cents and plus shipping. And then this one actually sold to someone in California for $25 for one comic book. So I feel like that's enough to probably let you guys know about it because they also paid $4.80 shipping. This is Hanna-Barbera Scooby-Doo. So there we are. This, um, now that's not to say every Scooby-Doo comic book is worth $25 plus shipping, but this particular one was. It's not hard to look up comic books. Um, you can usually just type in the title and whatever the, um, whatever the issue number is. And on, on comic books, if you just open the very first page at the very bottom where it shows the copyright information, somewhere in that paragraph, you're going to see the issue number. So it is very, very easy to look up comps on comic books that way. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I just think is so outstanding I want to tell you guys about. My son sold a pair of women's Levi's jeans. Um, so does my son know anything about women's fashion? Nope. Does he know anything about women's brands or anything like that? Nope. But these were $6 on clearance at Ross. And he just knew that he was gonna get his money back off of those. I ended up putting them back actually. He saw me looking at them and then he said, well, I wanna buy those. So we bought them for $6. We used a stock photo there and then I took photos here. Um, sold these for $40 plus $5 shipping for a pair of new, um, with the tags, women's Levi's retail arbitrage. Uh, let's see, there's probably, okay, one more sale here that I want to tell you guys about because again, the story is just so interesting. Not sure if this is in the 100 mile yard sale video or not because that's where I got it, but this Operation Desert Storm hat, this vintage hat that I found, um, these I believe were two for a dollar. Um, so I picked this hat up. I held on to it for a little while before I listed it and I listed it the other day. I just looked at uh, trying to look up other Desert Storm hats, vintage Desert Storm hat. And most of them seem to be around $20 or so, but I thought this one looked so cool. I priced it at $28 with free shipping. I've been offering a lot of free shipping on my vintage um, hats lately because I'm not sure why buyers aren't, aren't looking at my hats more often, but they're not, and I want to get them in their eyes, so I thought maybe I'm being filtered out. I'll add a little bit of extra and offer free shipping on these. So $28 with free shipping, sold within seconds of listing it. 
and I thought, what have I done here? What did I miss? Interesting story, and you can see um, photos about this over on my Instagram again. So, this particular hat in 2000, this hat is from the 90s, but in 2014, Supreme, like the brand Supreme, um, copied this hat and the only difference being it says supreme white over the top of the snapback back here and even the tag they copied and it looks like this and then it says supreme underneath it well this is the true vintage hat that's from the 90s that supreme hat can sell for 75 to 150 dollars depending on the colorway there's one just like this that sold or is listed over on ebay for 75 dollars but it's the supreme one so i was like well is supreme technically the knockoff on this and one of the viewers um and friends followers over on instagram made a good point kind of everything supreme does is lacks creativity and like no offense to supreme but that's kind of their brand is just putting their name on other people's items so i wonder if the people that originally came up with this concept for this desert storm hat were ever compensated because i'm telling you it is copied down to like the exact print where this is yellow there's a yellow where it is pink there's is pink but a buyer bought that within minutes and i just thought i wonder i mean obviously it's because it looks like the supreme one i hope they know that that's not what they're getting i have plenty of plenty of photos here but i just thought that that was interesting and really really worthy of note because although i couldn't find my exact desert storm hat it only took a quick um like i took my photo and i ran a quick search on google lens and was able to pull up the supreme one so if you're having trouble finding the item um that you are trying to find comps for if you're finding it difficult to get a good description and you want to know how did someone else describe it take a picture and pull up google lens it is such a phenomenal app not sponsored i don't think that they would sponsor anyone's video ever it's just an app that i want to tell you guys about you i can upload a photo um tell your kids about it because they can uh, upload a photo of their homework question and I think Google will answer the question. There's all kinds of things that Google Lens will do that definitely saves your skin sometimes as a reseller. So consider adding that app into, um, into I guess, your work repertoire, your, your pocketbook of apps there that saves your reseller skin. Um, but these are just some of the really cool sales that I wanted to let you guys know about for the month of June. I thank you so much for watching. I know these videos are always long, but if you guys comment and let me know like should I shorten them up and start making them one and two parts more often or do you enjoy being able to put on like a half hour video and get something listed while you're hearing me talk about either what sold or what I picked up or what's going on in the life of this reseller um, comment below and let me know thank you again so much for watching this video I hope you guys have a very blessed and um, appreciative 4th of July and celebrating our country's independence, watching a video today that had some American soldiers in it. It was just like a Hollywood portrayal, but I just thought, man, so many people have given up so much for our freedoms in this country, and I hope you guys can focus on that this 4th of July and really celebrate our independence. God bless you guys. As always, treat your business like your business.